have a record of 26 and 5, and we saw Coach Brad Hughes get his 100th win down in the Cook Center in the tournament, early season tournament, the Pioneer Tournament. Brad Hughes picked up his 100th win on Saturday, and then played the Pioneer or Friday and played the Pat Pioneers on Saturday. And lost Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 11th annual NAIA Division II Men's Basketball senior, National Championship at the Cuter Gymnasium on the Scobie campus Montana, of the College of the Ozark. Joel Deeskins, uh, number 32 from Belgrade, Montana, a senior, Bo Hitzel, number 33, another senior athletics. from Fort Mohawk. Please do your part by showing respect to every spectator, athlete, coach, and official involved in today's contest. Also a reminder, videotaping and flash photography are strict strictly prohibited by the NAIA. You may purchase videotapes immediately following the game upstairs behind the Vacation Channel banner. And now for your lineup for this second round game featuring the Jimmies of Jamestown College. And the Pioneers of Mid-American Nazarene. First, let's meet the honorary coaches. For Jamestown College, Ann Mary McGrath and Evan Shark of Branson Outdoor. And for Mid American Nazarene, Mike Radney and Kyle Smith of Fairfield Resorts Incorporated. And now for your starting lineups. Starting at a guard for Jamestown, a six foot senior from Scobie, Montana, number 23, Joel Neeskins. At a guard for Mid-American Nazarene, a six-foot sophomore from Great Bend, Kansas, number 10, Matt Keeley. At a guard for Jamestown, a six-foot, five-inch senior from Raytown, Missouri, number 55, Ramon Hill. At a guard for Mid-American Nazarene, a six-foot, two-inch senior from Olathe, Kansas, number 32, Jimmy Williams. At a forward for Jamestown, a six foot eight inch sophomore from center, North Dakota, number 43, Brandon Wilkins. At a forward for Mid-American Nazarene, a six foot six inch sophomore from Olathe, Kansas, number 24, David Peterson. At a forward for Jamestown, a six foot five inch senior from Belgrade, Montana, number 32, Bo Hensel. At a forward for Mid-American Nazarene, a six foot four inch junior from Rose Hill, Kansas, number 31, Rhett Hansen. At center for Jamestown, a six foot 10 inch senior from Fort Mohave, Arizona, number 33, Antonio Johnson. And at center for Mid-American Nazarene, a six foot four inch junior from Wichita, Kansas, number 44, Adam Hoots. The head coach for Jamestown College is Brad Hughes. The head coach for Mid-American Nazarene is Rocky Lamar. Our officials tonight, Greg Griffith, Neil Aguiar, and Carl Blair. And he almost hit me in the head. Six inches above my head, I look up, <laughs> and it's giving me a haircut. Well, it, was even going, it was even going through the Pioneers as they were kind of scrimmaging each other before the game. And Adam Oots looked at Keeley as he had to throw the pass really low and gave him a quick smile. But and Randy, as you mentioned, David Schaefer a few minutes ago. Expect to see him a little more tonight. Had a great game. Yeah. Six points. That's the thing. Two huge blocks on Wednesday. And you got to see him going up against Antonio Johnson at 6'10". That's the big thing about, about the Pioneers. We know, don't know much about Jamestown. Saw him twice this year. But Mid-America has a lot of depth and a lot of even players that can really come in and do the same things that everyone else is doing. So taking the tip will be Raymond Hill. Check that. That's going to be Antonio Johnson, the 6'10 senior, and Adam Oots. Oots doesn't look like he stands much of a chance, but he gets up there. But the tip is won by Jamestown. Neeskins going to control. So Joel Neeskins, the senior, going to have the basketball. Now pass it into Wilkins. Now working it inside to Hensel, the leading scorer, and a takeaway here. Matt Keeley stealing it away, getting it to Peterson, who scored the first points Wednesday night. Missed Rhett Hansen, the putback. Good, Rhett Hansen. 2 nothing Pioneers with 19.30 to play in the first period. Raymond Hill. Jamestown coming off an emotional victory over the host team, College of the Ozarks, 82-80 and scored with just three seconds remaining. Hensel did, and they won it. Hill 
Antonio Johnson now, turn around, shot good. We're tied at two. Now Keeley back down the floor. Gonna pass it off to Hanson. Looking to pass, they get it to Peterson on the near wing. He's gonna put it on the floor, drive the lane, turn around, fade away, shot up short, rebound right in the hands of Antonio Johnson back to Neeskins. He'll bring it up and across the timeline. Look back up top to Johnson, now in the corner to Raymond Hill. Gonna pass it over, Wilkins for a long three, no good. Neeskins with position down low, but Hanson wrestling it away. Check that, that was Bo Hensel with position, but Hanson working hard to get the rebound and pass it off to Matt Keeley, who now gets it to Jimmy Williams inside Adam Oots. He's gonna work on the 5'10", Johnson rising, scoring Adam Oots. Impressive wow. over the big man, Antonio Johnson. Very impressive, Randy. Now Neeskins with the basketball for the Jimmies. Now off to Wilkins in the near corner. Now rising for a 10-foot jumper was Johnson. He missed it, and a foul, and it's going to be on the Jimmies. And Mid-America going to get the ball back. They call that foul. Uh, number 33, Antonio Johnson. It's the first foul on him and the first team foul for the Jimmies. Jimmy Williams has it in the far corner, now up top to Matt Keeley. Gonna pass it off to Peterson, trying to work it into Oots. And cutting it off was Johnson, now inside Keeley. Gonna put it on the floor, working on Neeskins. 15 on the shot clock. And Red Hansen in the far wing, dumping it into Peterson. He's gonna wanna go to the basket, turn around, his shot's blocked, gets it back, passing off to Oots. He'll drive the lane, shot up, no good. Rebound, Peterson, put back, good with the left hand. David Peterson. A nice put back. Now Hill controlling for the Jimmies. Up top to Neeskins. Looked like he might have double dribbled there, but could have instead pick it up and drill a three. Wow, Neeskins stepping up and hitting the big shot there. And Mid America is still leading, but it's six to five with 17, 18 left in the first half. Jimmy Williams passing off to Hanson, driving baseline. And a foul's going to be caught on David Peterson. DP picking up his first, first team foul for Mid-America. Always hate to see a foul carter away from the ball when it really doesn't matter. Right, and remember Peterson in foul trouble Wednesday night. Can't afford to get too many tonight. It's good to get position down low and, and work, but not if you get busted. And right there, DP was busted. Pencil gonna pass off the Neeskins for three again, but there's a foul called. And they're gonna get a pioneer here. We get 44, Adam Oots with the hold, his second personal team's second as well. So inbounding, Neeskins looking, passing off to Hensel. Now Hill's got it. Back to Neeskins. He's way back behind the arc. He's gonna pull up for three anyway, missed it. Rebound to Rhett Hansen. Trying to get it to Matt Keeley, but Hansen's gonna go, go ahead and put it on the floor, pass it up to Oots. Now off to Williams. Neeskins not letting Keeley get the ball. Now Hanson. Jamestown really trying to take Mid-America out of their game and not let them run any plays offensively. Jimmy Williams get it, gets it. Going to drive the lane, pass off to Hanson, rising off the glass. Too strong. Ball's on the floor. Finally rebounded by Hensel. Neeskins back for the Jimmy. Now passing back to Hensel. Now back over to Neeskins at the top. Being guarded by Keeley. Now passing into Wilkins. Inside. Hensel going to work on Hanson, a right hand hook up and good. Bo Hensel, the 6'5 senior from Bell Grant, Montana, averaging 19 points a game with a big shot there, putting Jamestown up 7 to 6 with 16 minutes to play in the first. Peterson making a move, blocked for a second time by Wilkins, but gets it back the second time and passes back to Matt Keeley now into Oots, trying to work on Davis in the paint. Now, Peterson rising for a jumper, no good. And the rebound it is to Hensel. Now, Neeskins. Passing in the corner to Wilkins, inside, making a move. Johnson, shots up, gonna be caught on the floor. Oots picking up his second personal foul. Wow, Randy. Obviously not a good thing for Oots. With less than five minutes into the game, two fouls. But he does indeed have his hands full with Antonio Johnson. Expect to see Schaefer in, in here sometime Johnson big soon. and physical. Snyder checking in and gets a good ovation from the crowd. Again, we mentioned had an ankle injury, rolled his ankle. It's all taped up. And he'll be back in action. And let's see how it works. Inside.
Johnson, a shot off the glass, no good. Hill, good position, the putback is good. Raymond Hill from Raytown, Missouri. Putting it back up now, Jamestown leading nine to six with 15, 19 to play. Trying to pass it inside, turned over Mid-America. Really losing their momentum here as they throw it out of bounds. And Joel Hardy, last night's spark checking in for Hanson. So Niskin's gonna get it back off the inbound and come back. Pick set on Keeley. Gets it again, not a moving pick. Rough call, no call, but Wilkins. Now to Davis, now to Niskin's in the far wing. Now up top, Hensel for three, rising, shooting, scoring. 12 to six now, Jamestown with 14.50 to play. Keeley puts it on the floor, throws it out of bounds. Coach Lamar may take a timeout here. But instead, he's going to send Miller in. And Edwin Williams coming in, the 6'7 junior from La Place, Louisiana. Boots checking out. So on the floor for Mid-America is Jimmy Williams, Joel Hardy, Clint Snyder, Jeff Miller, and Matt Keeley. Neeskins controlling. Now passing off to Williams up top. Johnson, now Neeskins on the far wing. Going to put it on the floor, pushing off. Fadeaway shot short, and Williams with the rebound. And he'll bring it up the floor. Clint Snyder was wide open, couldn't get him the basketball. Snyder has not had a touch offensively yet. Really hasn't been tested. Jeff Miller on the far wing, now to Hardy at the top, now to Williams. Williams kind of running the point here. Looking to step up, take a three, does. Missed it, rebound, fought for, but Niskin's coming up with it. Didn't look like a very good look there from Williams, but put it up and just missed it. And rebound to Jamestown. Now a three for Williams, no good. Rebound to Hardy. Ahead, Miller, easy lay in, good. Pioneer score. Nice out. Eight. Excuse me, Randy. Just a great look from Joel Hardy. Nice outlook pass. Hardy found a wide open. Jeff Miller on the interior and had an easy lay-in. Now Williams. Jamestown's version of Williams. Looked like he might have traveled, but no call. Hensel inside. Johnson going to have to go back to Niskins. No, he's going to make a move. Turnaround shot. No good. Rebound. Williams. And he lost the handle. And Matt Keeley coming away with it. We got a three-on-one here. Niskins says he have a chance. Back to Keeley. Lay-in. He's fouled. No Good on the basket, but he'll go to the line, shooting two. But Niskin's a pro probably a good foul there, picking up his first personal foul and not letting Keeley have the easy points. And really, on breakaways, can really give the team momentum, and, and good job by Niskin's, probably a smart foul. And Randy, we still haven't seen Clint Snyder touch the ball yet. We're kind of anxious for that. Seeing how he'll do after the ankle injury last week in practice. First shot up from Keeley's good. Brian White coming in. And number 20, Benny Frajela from Miami, Florida, provided a spark down in Olathe, up in Olathe. I guess we're south now, aren't we? But up in Olathe earlier on in the season as Keeley sinks both of them and really hits some big threes. But then Mid-America just took it away at the end. But right now, the Jimmies are in control, 12 to 10, with 13 minutes left in the first. Frajela in the corner, passing off. Williams had it on the floor, but taken back. And now inside to Jamestown's Williams. Count the bucket and the foul. And he'll go to the line and try and cap off a three-point play. So Williams picking up his first foul. Team's fourth for Mid-America. John Gideon coming in for Jimmy Williams from Stoutland, Missouri. Very good sophomore. Really a threat from behind the arc. Williams capping off the three-point play. We got a 16-10 lead. 15-10 lead for Jamestown. Matt Keeley going to drive to Hardy. Trying to look up top. And you can tell early, Carter, this is not the same Jamestown team that came down in the, to the Cooks in earlier on in the season. Hardy's shot was up and swatted by Brian White. 
and back comes Niskin and the Jimmies. Kind of expect Coach Lamar maybe to get a timeout here, but still Pioneers only down five, even though it seems like Jamestown's really been controlling this first eight minutes. Inside, Hensel is shot up. No good, Hardy, good defense. Good position inside, no foul call, and Pioneers get it back as it's knocked out of bounds by Williams of Jamestown. Wow, pretty exciting first eight minutes, Carter. Most definitely. And it looks like the Jimmies have kind of the height advantage here now, too. Look for Joel Hardy now, has it? Now to Miller, looking over to Keeley in the far wing. Now up top, Gideon, gonna put it on the floor, drive, lose the handle, it's kicked. It's still gonna be a Pioneer basketball, though. Knocked out of bounds by the Jimmy. 17 seconds on the shot clock. Coming back in is Brandon Wilkins, and for the first time, Travis Bronegel. Bronego, a freshman from Fargo, North Dakota. Guess we should pronounce it Fargo. <laughs> and now Keeley in the control for Mid-America. Nine seconds of the shot clock. Clint Snyder, his first touch. You know he's going to go to the basket. He's hammered, and he'll go back to the line to shoot two here. Good job by Snyder. Showing no strain in that ankle. Just took it and went right to the rack. But was fouled and will shoot two. So Snyder to shoot his first. Shots up and good. So Snyder gets another 11.36 to play here in first half action from the NAIA Division II tournament round of 16. And Snyder sinking both free throws, 15 to 12, Jamestown leading again with 11.36 to play. For Hala, passing off to Brunegel. He's gonna drive past Miller. Gonna go back up top to Wilkins. Now for Hala on the near wing. Jamestown in black tonight. And they're heading left to right. Ball knocked around, but gets back in the hands of White. And Frejela gets it back and make a quick move on Gideon. Blocked by Miller. Great block. Miller getting up kind of slow. Snyder was wide open again. Can't believe he's not getting the ball when he's wide open. He's not happy, but good for the Pioneers to slow things down. Now in the hands of Gideon. Going to drive. Shot up. No good. Getting his own rebound. The putback. No good. Wilkins grabbing the board. Now back up to Bronegel. And here comes Jamestown. Bronegel waiting, finally finding Williams. Now for Hala, way back, hits a three, but a foul's called before the shot on, I'm not sure who they're gonna get here. Let's see. They get Gideon. It's not a very good angle when the referee's right. getting the, the numbers on the foul. Rahela shooting the three after making the long one, misses the short one. And fortunate for the Pioneers, the long one didn't count because there's a foul before it. And it ends up being a, a pretty smart foul as they don't score on the attempt. Snyder rising and shooting. And Clint Snyder off the injured ankle, coming right out, scoring four points early. And we, are they counting that as a three? We've got a 15-15 game. Snyder, a big three. And Miller with a rebound on the miss on the other end. Snyder put, or uh, check that. Miller putting it on the floor to Hardy. Now in the corner, Snyder. Now out to Keeley. They do finally change the Snyder shot to a two as Gideon shooting the three and drilling it. Wow, a big shot from the sophomore John Gideon. 17-15 in America back on top. Wilkins being guarded by Hardy. Now for Hala. He'll drive. Reich pass it off. Pencil. Back to Bonegel. Braunegel. Now inside. Pencil again. Working on Miller. No look pass. For Hala miss. Wilkins to put back no good, but there's a foul call on the Pioneers. And Randy, this is really starting to turn into a physical game. I don't know if you missed on that last play, but after Gideon hit the three, Brunegel just pulled Keeley down. And then stepped on him, and the referee came up yelling at, at Keeley, and Keeley pleading his case. As the second foul on John Gideon. 
For Hayless, he throws up and good. He'll get another. And for Hala, a 6'2 sophomore out of Miami, Florida. And Jimmy Williams back in the ball game, as well as Oots and Stimson, the senior from Clarinda, Iowa, checking in for the first time. And his whistle's blowing. And Oots is going to go ahead and take Snyder's spot down low. You want as much, you don't want very much physical action going on with Snyder. Stay away from it as much as possible. He's going to get plenty, but why not have Oots down there battling? Good decision. Both shots up and good from Frahela. We're tied at 17 with 9.28 as Raymond Hill coming back in. And look who's coming, Carter. Big Dave Schaefer, the seven. There's our man. Player. This is going to be fun, Randy, to watch. Schaefer. Johnson and Schaefer. Schaefer came in, had six points, and just did a really nice job the other night. A couple blocks as Stimson controlling for Mid-America. Now Williams into Oots. And tied at 17 with 9.12 to go. Clint Steiner at the top. Into Schaefer, a move, a shot up good, but he traveled before the shot. Nice move, but a good move by the big man. Just kind of picked up his pivot foot. Looked like a good move. I guess he kind of cheated on it, but didn't get away with it, so that's okay. Wilkins rising for three. No good. Rebound tipped around and won by Raymond Hill. The putback shot up. No good. Rebound is now to Johnson. Going to put it back to Hensel for three. No good. Rebound Stimson. Quickly ahead. Jimmy Williams, lob pass into Oots. Oots a shot up, good, over the big man, Antonio Johnson. Adam Oots, nice touch inside on the thing. 19-17, Mid-America regaining the lead with 8.30 to play in the first. Ball on the floor, stolen away by Adam Oots. Stimson, ahead to Snyder. Gonna drive, jump step, lay in, good, and they call a travel. And the jump step, not legal here. As he looked like he did take Maybe an extra step, but Snyder, a good drive and really coming in playing well. And and we're glad to see that. Excuse me, Randy. We're glad to see that move. And you also got to take can do it. You got to take into consideration this is his first game here at the tournament, and he's still. You'd think he'd have some jitters that everyone else got rid of Wednesday, but nice job coming in from Snyder, but an extra step on that one. But Mid America retaining the lead, 19-17, 8-10. Inside, wide open, jumper up and good from Bo Hensel, the senior out of Belgrade, Montana. Seth Stimson, gonna dribble to the top, now to Adam Oots. Now the far corner to Jimmy Williams, gonna come back through the wing to the top, now to Stimson, right at midcourt. 20 on the shot clock, Peterson. He'll put it on the floor, go back to Stimson. Stimson being guarded by a very physical defender, in Niskins, Oots up. Looked like he might have been hammered, and it's going to stay Pioneer basketball as Hill trying to get the call. Randy, only five seconds on the shot clock for the Pioneers. Going to have to get something in quick and put it up. Maybe look for one to go into Schaefer right here. An alley -oop. Be a good time. <laughs> Reset the shot clock as it's a kick. What a break for the Pioneers there. As Stimson trying to get it in and it was kicked out by a Jimmy. Williams in to Seth Stimson. Now back to Williams right now near us. Now Oots gets it. Gonna put it on the floor, drive in the paint. Shot up, tough shot, he's fouled and will take two shots as he didn't score it, but was fouled. And Coach Brad Hughes very upset at the call there. The Jimmys again out of Jamestown, North Dakota. Enrollment of 1,100. So pretty similar to Mid-America. And we've got a pretty similar game going on. 1919 was 722, but Adam Oots at the free throw line sinking his first. And Randy, like we said earlier, we knew coming in this would be a much closer game than we saw back when the Pioneers played them in the third game of the season and won by 16. 
a much improved Jamestown team. 7.22 left. Mid America now leading 21-19 as Oots sinks both free throws. And Adam Oots, it, it's strange you can't play Hacka Oots like you play Hacka Shack in the NBA on the big center. He's very has very good touch from the free throw line. Now Wilkins. Hensel trying to work it into Hill. He'll get it. Rise. He's fouled. And some confused looks on the Pioneers as Jimmy Williams picking up his second foul. One on one going to go up. A lot of fouls early from the Pioneers, Carter. So they get Williams on his second 17 foul. So the one on one going up from Hill. Randy, we saw a lot of fouls Wednesday night, but one good thing is we do have one extra guy and one good guy, that is, in Clint Snyder. So Coach has a little more options tonight if there are more fouls. So Hill to the line, shooting the 1-1. His first shot, good, so he'll get another. Schaefer and Oots down low for the Pioneers. Looks like Hensel and Johnson for Jamestown are going to fight for the rebound if there's a miss. And there is a miss in Big Dave Schaefer ripping down the board. Matt Keeley drives to Joel Hardy. Now Schaefer. In America up 21-20 with 6.50 to go. Keeley, six-footer up and good. Rising in the paint, Matt Keeley getting the touch in. That's Matt's fourth point. Neeskin's going to rise for three, shoot it up, no good, off the front iron. And down with it comes Joel Hardy. He'll bring it all the way down and pass off to Peterson. Looks to Oots, put it on the floor. Come back to Peterson in the paint. Turn around, shot up. Good, David Peterson over the 6'10". Antonio Johnson, and he has four points and a timeout. Jamestown will be back in 30 seconds. Mid America 25, Jamestown 26 19 to play on your Pioneer Sports Radio Network. All right. Really? I can't remember. Was that, was that a fadeaway? From who? I, from Peterson? Yeah. No, he just kind of okay. threw up high. That was nice. Yeah. He's got blocked twice, so he had to throw it up. Hey, I'll say something about that. About what? I'll say something about that. Back live from Point Lookout, Missouri. Fine ears leading 25-26-18 to play in the first period. And Randy, that last shot by Peterson, what a beautiful one it, it was. He kind of had to arch it a, few, a little more than usual because he's been blocked the first two times he shot. Neeskins rising and falling back on the floor, but no double dribble. And a jump ball is called. Pioneers get it anyway, but Joel Hardy trying to call the timeout. But possession arrow belongs to Mid-America, so it works out for the Pioneers. 6.03 left here in the first. 25-20 Mid-America. Referee having to towel down the floor, a little sweaty. As this floor has got gotten a lot of abuse these past few days. Games from 8.30 on to about midnight. 11.30 midnight. And Peterson's pass is knocked out of bounds today. Action didn't get started until about, I think, 9 a.m. And will end up at 9.45 tonight with Holy Family taking on Evergreen. Matt Keeley working on Neeskins. Now Hansen looks to Peterson at the top. He'll put her on the floor. He's working on Williams. Going to drive baseline. Try to pass off. Hill right there to pick the pass. And Coach Lamar looking at Clint Snyder on the bench to come in. Neeskins to Williams in the far corner. Now inside to Johnson. Going to make a move on Hansen. Pushing off. Shot up. Good. And count it. They call a foul on Hansen here. And a technical foul is called here on number 33, 
Antonio Johnson, why he got a technical, I did not catch it. Did you see Carter? I did not, I, I'm wondering the same thing there, Randy. Really stupid on his part when the call went his way and then he gets a tee. Wow, a big technical foul as Jamestown had the bucket. And Peterson gonna go to the free throw line for Mid-America on the technical. Not sure what happened there. Just jawing off, it seemed, as Peterson making his first 26-22 now in America. Second shot, good as well. So it pays off for Mid-America, as Johnson looked like he might have been mouthing off. Clint Snyder coming in for Peterson. Antonio Johnson will shoot one. And Johnson is shoot one. Is Johnson the victim, but then jawed off to a pioneer, and the referee was right there to tee him up. And Johnson will shoot one shot here, trying to cap off his three-point play, and the referee's making sure the MNU bench sits down. Is Johnson still waiting for the ball? Cowboy has to come out and clear off his space for the referee. 27-22, Mid-America leading with 5.23 to play in the first period. Mid-America and Jamestown playing a great game so far. Really physical and really just a well-played game all around. David or er, Antonio Johnson's shot is up and good. So 27-23, Mid-America. Matt Keeley has the basketball. Passing off to Hanson. Now up top to Oots. He'll get it, put it on the floor, and going to peel out and look to Hanson on the far wing. Hanson will put it on drive, shot up no good. Hardy with the rebound, the putback is good. Wow. Kevin Hardy continuing the spark off Wednesday night's performance as he has two points. That's his first two, but nice take to the hole. Williams has it for Jamestown. Now in Johnson. Now Hensel. Bouncing it in, Hill, gonna make a move on Hardy, Rise, shoot it up, good! Nice shot from Raymond Hill. Now Keeley back. Gonna find an open Hardy in the near wing. Back up top to Keeley. Now over, Hardy gets a lane, gonna force it up, they call an offensive foul here, no position it looked like, but what can you do? That's a rough call. No way right there that Hansel beat Hardy to the spot. But the referee saw it differently, so Jamestown gets the basketball. Niskin off to Hill. He's behind the arc. Now up top to Johnson. Now Niskin. Hensel. Back to Ramon Hill. He'll drive again, come back to Hensel. And now inside, Johnson shut up good. Antonio Johnson now with seven points. Hardy has it. Now to Snyder. Finds a great pass to Keeley, and Niskin's going to get caught on the foul here. 29 27, Mid America with the lead in the basketball. 344 as a foul was called there. Great look, though, from Snyder to Keeley right there. Guys play their. High school games down in great in Kansas and really are used to each other but had to take a year off from each other as Keeley a year older. And Randy, what have one exciting game we've seen. Just some great passes and some great looks for the hole tonight. Just great game so far. Keeley gonna have to loft it out to Oots and then gets it back at the top. Now Snyder over to Oots. Setting a pick with Snyder. Oots gonna drive, lay it up, no good. Rebound, Oots, put back, no good. Another put back, and it's good. Adam Oots, relentless on the boards, and puts it in. 31-27, Mid-America. Hill. Now Hensel trying to answer with a three. Nothing but the bottom of the net there for Hensel. 31 to 30, 305 left in the first. Keeley. Neeskins looking right at the referee trying to get the push-off call. Didn't get it, lost it in, and knocked out of bounds. 
by Antonio Johnson there, trying to get it into the big man Schaefer, but Johnson, some pretty good hops at 6'10 and throwing it out. Might have been able to catch that, but just making sure Schaefer had no chance. And Snyder to inbound. Oots setting a, a moving pick, but no call, and gets Keeley the basketball now off to Oots. Hanson, he'll put it on the floor, drive, baseline. Real physical, no foul call, a block, a clean block by Brandon Wilkins, and back comes Hill, cutting, shot blocked by Snyder, and Snyder staring him down. I love it. Snyder, great defense coming back. MNU leading 31 to 30 with 2.35 left here in the first. Raymond Hill crossing over Hanson. Gonna come back Wilkins for a long two, no good. Rebound, Williams shot up. That's no good, a put back is up and good from Bo Hensel. So back up top, Jamestown now, 32-31. Snyder. They're trying to work it into Schaefer. He needs to get out of the box. Three-pointer up from Adam Oots. It's good, Adam Oots. Wow, what a surprise from three. He's hit a few this season, but... And Adam Oots with 11 points. Trying to answer there. Nieskins no good. Oots fighting for the rebound, getting it ahead to Snyder. And Nieskins... They call a travel on Clint Snyder there. Nieskins, good defense getting over, forcing the stutter step of Snyder there. Then America's Adam Oots from three land this year is four of 12, 33%, makes a big one there, a surprise to the Jimmies. In Mid-America up top, on top, 34-32 with 150 remaining. Neeskins on the far wing. Looking to a cutting Wilkins. No, he's gonna come back to Frahela at the top. Back over to Neeskins. Working it inside. Pencil a shot up. No good. Wilkins fighting for the rebound. Hill gets it. His put back, no good. Tipped around. Hensel gets it. He's going to make a move on Miller. Puts it up and in. Relentless there was Hensel. And he's going to come back and foul Keeley. The great defense by Hensel. And he's pleading his case with the referee. Can't believe the call. We're going to have a one on one here. As Matt Keeley will go to the line. We're tied at 34. What a first half we've had. That's the second foul on Hensel. And 123 remaining, Carter. And Randy, this has to be one of the most physical, well-played games we've seen. Pretty much at almost the all year. Yeah, in the tournament and one of the top games we've seen played all year by the now, Pioneers. Granted, we haven't seen every game of the tournament, just right. bits and pieces, but this has really been a physical game, a really close game. And that's the thing about this tournament. Most of the games have been very close as Keeley gonna get his second shot as he made his first. So Matt Keeley gonna shoot up his second. Shot runs around, finally goes in for Mid-America. 36-34, MNU with the lead. Hill. Gonna take some time off the clock, a skip pass. Neeskins rising for three. Good! Neeskins putting Jamestown up top. 37-36 with one minute remaining in the first half. Now Hanson, passing off to Miller. Now Keeley, down to Snyder. A cutting Williams, gonna jump back up. Shoot a three, good! The senior Jimmy Williams answering the senior. Neeskins on that three and Mid-America back on top by two, 39-37. This is incredible. What a game we've had so far. Wilkins, working on Snyder, a shot up, no good. Hanson with the rebound. And getting it to Keeley. And Randy, what a good sign for the Pioneers. Williams, a top three-point shooter for the Pioneers, has struggled, but what a confidence booster there. And the fans get on their feet for Mid-America as we've ticked down to 15 seconds. MNU waiting for one shot as the shot clock is turned off. The senior Jimmy Williams has the basketball with under 10 now. Passing off to Keeley. A foul's caught on Neeskins, and Keeley will go to the line, and Neeskins picking up his third foul, and that is big. Hardy and Peterson coming in for Hanson and Snyder, and Stimson gonna come in 
for Jimmy Williams. So Keeley to the line, shooting the one on one. Six point one remaining here in the first half, and Keeley's first shot is good, so he'll get a second. Then America did a nice shot from the line early. Seven points for Matt Keeley, and most of them from the line. Now eight points as he makes them both in America up by four, 6.1 left. Neeskins gonna drive, probably shoot a three here. Three, two, one, driving to the hole. Shoots it up short, and Mid-America will go in, leading at the half, 41-37. We'll be back in three minutes with some halftime stats and comments on Cayman U Channel 18. You're listening to a special, special presentation of NAIA Division II Tournament Action. Mid-America leading at the half, 41-37. We'll be back on your Pioneer Sports Radio Network. Wow, no timeouts in the first half, except one. Yeah. They're, they're phoning in our station. Um. Yeah, don't do that. Maybe put up a sign that says call uh, 3386 in the office. Okay. You want to talk to Bennett? Am I going to talk first, or is he yeah, going to come right back talk on? And then we'll, hey, no, we're going to keep it here the whole time, too. How much time is on this one? Play another one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank our tournament partner, Roy Hope. Wow. She's good. Right uh, 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 just a second. I'm going to talk to her for a second and bring you in here. I'll go get some when Bennett comes on. No time out. There's one, 30 seconds. Um. All right, thank you. I don't know what I want. How much time? Okay. I guess just a water. We're going to talk for a, a minute or two, and then I'm going to take another time out, and then... Josh Bennett's gonna come talk, and then we'll take another time out, and then Carter, and then we'll go. All right. In the three Muska tier, if you like. Is that cool? Back live from Point Lookout, Missouri, home of the Ozarks here. College of the Ozarks, the Bobcats, they lost to Jamestown in the first round, 82-80. In America leading Jamestown right now, 41-37. And we're about seven and a half minutes away from second half action, but quite a first half, Carter, from both teams. Very evenly matched, and just an incredible half. Very much so, Randy. Look to see that in the second half. Oots having a great game so far. Just a very physical game. And can't see much better defense play than that. Adam Oots, Adam Oots already with 11 points. And Keeley with eight, leading the Pioneers. Go Hensel with a quiet 14 points. And Neeskins with two threes, hitting six, seven for Antonio Johnson. We're going to come back and talk to our KMNU basketball analyst, Josh Bennett, right after a one-minute break on KMNU Channel 18, your Pioneer Sports Radio Network. All right, thanks. What'd you say? I said, you think I'm gonna make a move on you over here? <laughs> Just a little too, a little too close for comfort. Boy, uh, Jamestown's dirty. Yeah, they Did are. Did you notice that? They've really gotten dirty over the season. Yeah, they have. Now, uh, did you notice that they don't have hardly any of the same players playing? Yeah, they do. Well, I mean, start the same starters didn't start. Yeah, they did. Not according to Coach Peterson. Uh, 
I think maybe two changes. Oh, really? Hill and... Uh, Back live from Point Lock, Lookout, Missouri, the NAIA Division II, round of 16, Mid-America leading at the half, 41-37 over Jamestown. And I'm joined by KMNU basketball analyst Josh Bennett, humored by that label, but... Well, I'm not much of an analyst. But Josh, uh, let's first start, start with this game and how Mid-America's been playing and, and just some of the things you've seen here in the first well, half. Uh, first thing I've got to say about the Pioneers is their overall level of intensity has just stepped up 100% from what we saw the last couple of weeks of the regular season and in the conference tournament. It's like back back in those games, they didn't even want to show up or even get on the floor and get out there and run. And now they're, they're playing extremely hard, just like they did last year. And uh, you know, talking to some of the coaches before the game, they said that, uh, that Jamestown, last time they played back in November, didn't start. Now, uh, one of the coaches said that they just started had five different starters, but Randy's doesn't think that's right. No, he said I, they might have had two different starters. And uh, the coaches uh, the coaches said they think back then that they were scared that Mid-America was going to run them because the night before they had uh, played Oklahoma Wesleyan or somebody and just lit them up by about 25, 30 points. Yeah. And uh, so uh, Jamestown was a little bit tentative going into that game, so they just decided they'd st start a slow, I mean, a faster, quicker lineup. But tonight they're hanging with the Pioneers, and they're playing – they're playing overall a lot better than they did the other night against College of the Ozarks. Oh, yeah, there's there's really no comparison from the way they played down in up in Olathe and, and here as really Jamestown has just really changed their really outlook on the on the game here is they're physical. They're really beating up the Pioneers inside. It's really not affecting the Pioneers are really, really acting. Yeah, the, I mean, the Pioneers were getting beat back the last couple, especially against Central Methodist. Central Methodist just pounded them inside and really dominated inside. Obviously, they have a little bit better center than uh, Mid-America could face. Any, any, I mean, they're the best post player in the conference, I really, I truly believe. But uh, anyway, this guy inside tonight, and David Schaefer, the play of David Schaefer is really helping. He's stepping up. Wow, what about Wednesday? Uh, yeah, Wednesday night, he played incredible, just really stepped up and uh, had a lot of intensity and came in with some big defensive blocks. and and uh, really played well, grabbed some rebounds tonight. He's doing the same thing. So he, his game has been much improved. And maybe you just wonder, what, what, what if, if he had been able to play more? Because it's not like the last week he could have had any time to improve 100%, but well, he really thing, has. The thing is, I mean, it's really impressive to see a freshman step up at this point in the season. I mean, really, we said earlier he was kind of an experiment early in the season. And hey, let's throw the seven three-footer out there and see what happens. And right now he's really, becoming a big part of their lineup, just coming in in certain situations and just playing good defense. And really, Wednesday, he, he played a big part in the offense, putting in six points. And, and they were big points at the time, even though an 11-point win came later for, for yeah. America. Well, and in true, the Pioneers didn't even play that well the other night. I mean, for most of the game, until about the last four minutes, they really stepped up their intensity and ran away with the game. And they carried it over into this evening. So it's nice to see from the MNU and a lot of underclassmen the play of uh, Joel Hardy has really impressed me in this tournament. He has stepped up and played better than I've seen him play in four years of, of basketball, Mid -America, three years of Mid-America or whatever. He's, he's, he's playing extremely well. Adam Moots having a good game inside, and the Pioneers are controlling the boards. Jamestown got up to an early lead, and uh, they did so by out-rebounding him and you, who is actually leads the nation in rebounding, Mar Marty's, but by now 10. the Pioneers are, have a six... six Six, uh, <laughs> six more rebounds. Six more rebounds in uh, <laughs> Jamestown. Jamestown shot just 38% from the field. Mid America shooting 52%, and that that's really kind of scary. That that Jamestown took what is it, 12 more shots than MNU? Yeah. And that <laughs> really just great defense by the by the Pioneers. These teams. I was looking over the stats before the game. Very evenly matched, and we noticed that in the first half. Now, Josh, let's talk a little bit about the brackets here in the tournament. We've got it all updated for you here with uh, Northwestern just beating Huntington at the 430 game. And just some of the games you've seen, just some of the teams that impress you, Josh. Um, well, first of all, I gotta say the Warner Southern game this afternoon. I don't, I don't know if you had a chance to witness that. Sioux Falls was up by 18 with nine minutes to go, and Warner Southern came back and won the game by 19 points. It was early in the morning, so, I mean, I guess they needed time to wake up, but goodness, down wow, 18. Wow, yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't play well on Wednesday afternoon, and then they didn't play well starting for even 
for the first uh, 41 minutes of the game. I mean, 31 minutes of the game, and then came back and just dominated the last nine minutes. Warner Southern has a lot of talent, a lot of talent at Warner Southern. Cornerstone uh, tomorrow, the winner of this game, will play Cornerstone, and uh, I think they're very beatable. They, I don't yeah. think they're as good as they were last year. We, we saw them play Mount St. Clair yeah. Wednesday night, and they were not that impressive, but, but any team can step up at any time, especially in the tournament. I, I don't know if you, did you get to stay and watch the Evangel game last night, Randy? I, I because did not. Evangel was impressive. They were impressive. What they, was the final of that game? Uh, I believe it was uh, seven, uh, 82 to 41 or something like that. Uh, uh, St. Joseph scored 13 points in the second half. 13? Uh, yeah, you Evangel say? outscored them 52 to 13 in the second oh half. Oh my word! All right, well, back to I gotta go. So, all right, we uh, appreciate you joining us, and we're gonna take a 30-second timeout and be back with second half action. In America, leading 41-37 in your Pioneer Sports Radio Network. No, it's in the office. It should ring in the other office. Oh. How much time? Back live with second half action already underway here from Point Lookout, Missouri. Hensel inside, missing Oots with the rebound. And coming back is Matt Keeley, in America. Really going to have to play. Some good basketball to hang with Jamestown is in America leading by four right now with 1935 left in the ball game, but really going to have to play full out and throw it all out on the table as it could be Williams and Stimson's last season in a Pioneer, last game in a Pioneer uniform, but they look pretty good so far. Williams driving his layup partially blocked and back comes Hill working on Keeley, a laying up. No good, but right there for the putback is Antonio Johnson. And now it's a two-point basketball game. Hanson to Williams. Inside, Adam Oots wide open, making a move, trying to draw the foul, but instead putting it off the glass and good. Nice look there for Matt Keeley. Niskins with three fouls. Really, if he fouls out, they're in trouble because he's really the floor general stolen away by Peterson. Hill lost the handle. Ahead, Rhett Hansen back to Williams. Nice look for Rhett Hansen to Jimmy Williams for the easy lay-in. Hansen now with five points. Or Williams checked out with five points. Hansen's second assist. Shut up, no good. Peterson ripping down the board. Here comes Matt Keeley and the Pioneers. Now Peterson over on the wing to Oots. 45-39, Oots driving. Looked like he drawed a foul, but Hill with a clean block off the glass, and Niskins has it. He might pull up and shoot it. He does from three. No good. Oots, good position on Johnson getting the rebound and ahead to Keeley. Back to Williams. Williams trying to run with it. Mid-America really controlling the pace here early in the second half. Peterson shooting up a shot. Good. David Peterson putting the Pioneers up by eight. And a timeout called by Coach Hughes. And Randy, how clutch has DP been all year? Impressive. It full timeout, so we'll take it with him. We'll be back. Pioneers with some good momentum coming out in the second half. 47-39, they lead it with 17-48 remaining in the ballgame. We'll be back on KMNU Channel 18. All right. Kind of annoying, isn't it? Well, you can go answer it after the timeout. See what they want. That that would suck for some reason if it wasn't. What? For what? What clip? So if it wasn't streaming. For yeah. Some. That's the only thing I can think of. Thanks. All right.
Back live from Fort Lake Out, Missouri. Mid-America up eight now with 17.35 remaining in the ball game. The Jimmies have the basketball. Neeskins pass almost steal, stolen by Keeley. This time it is, and Matt Keeley coming down the floor, looking to pull up, instead gonna drive. A lay-in, good, and count it! No, they're gonna call an offensive foul on the far end. One referee counted it, one referee calls offensive, and the referee that Wow, called you the offensive kidding. foul, got the upper hand there and made the call. So Keeley picking up his first personal, but wow, what a strong take to the basket. And it really looked like the other official that called the foul on Neeskins had the better angle, but goes the other way, goes to Jamestown. Hensel inside and a push off. Going to get probably Rhett Hansen here. They do, and Rhett Hansen picking up his second personal foul. Going to reset the shot clock. 17.07 remaining in the game. In America, 47-39. But Jamestown gets it into Hensel. Triple team, going to come out, shoot it anyway, and score. Wow, oh, Hensel, a nice move to get out of that triple team and shot it up off the glass now. Pioneers up six. Hensel now with 16 points already. Brett Hansen going to drive the lane, work on Hansel, shoot it up and score it, big Red Hansen, and Rhett with four points. You got to love that guy, Randy, just a hard worker and another clutch player for the Pioneers. What Raven a move. Hill. Now to Neeskins in the near wing. Inside, Johnson shot up, no good. Peterson with a rebound, coming away to Keeley. And America can try and take a 10 or 11 point lead here. Williams going to drive the hole. Look to Oots, but it's knocked away, away by Wilkins. And now Neeskins has it. Trying to run with it, and it's knocked out of bounds by Hensel. And just kind of running into each other there. Williams coming in for the Jimmies. Matt Keeley gets it for the Pioneer. Going to come across the timeline here. In America, 49-41, 16.05 to play in the game. Oots at the top. Now going to come back to Keeley in the far wing. Pass it off to Williams. He's fouled by Hill. And Williams just driving and they and they call it before the shot. And Hill picking up his first personal foul. First team foul of the second half for James Sand. Williams trying to inbound. Looks to Keeley. It's knocked off the back by Hill, and Mid-America keeps possession. Pioneers, 11th seeded, and Jamestown, the sixth seed. Get it into Oots, and finally, a call from back here, and the referee that had the better angle didn't call anything. The other referee calling a foul on Jamestown. And they get Hill for his second in a row, Ramon Hill. Randy, for the last 30 seconds, Coach Lamars had his hands on top of his head in disbelief. I don't think we could believe that one either. Oates hits his first. We'll see if he can make it a 10-point lead here. Adam Oates with 14 points. And second shot's up and good. Mid-America really shooting free throws well here in the first in the, in the game, really, 14 of 14 from the free throw line. Now in the corner, Braun Nagel going to throw it inside, and a foul's going to be called. Hensel going to check that. It's going to be Antonio Johnson to the line. David Peterson picking up his second personal, team's third for MNU. 15-45 to play, Mid-America leading 51-41. Really come out on fire here in the second half. As Johnson shooting his first and it's good. 10 points for Johnson, trying to make it 11 from the line. Johnson again, a 6'10 senior from Fort Mojave, Arizona. Makes them both. So MNU's lead, falls to eight now. Full court presses on, and 
Keeley throwing a pass to Coach Lamar, and he hasn't suited up for quite a while for the Pioneers, so it's going to be a turnover. It's been a good 20 years since Coach Lamar put on the old MNU Uni. As Hill has it, trying to cut it to six, pulls up and does. A nice shot from about nine feet, and Hill with a seven, a three from Braun. Nagel, good off the steal. Wow. And here comes the Jimmys right back in this game within two. Now pass to Peterson. The full court, court press really taking Mid America by surprise as Peterson trying to answer. Got it. DP, a big answer right there. And he is not the weakest link on that answer, huh? Wow, Hill. Now Braun Nagel trying to pass it inside. Nagel still open. A shot from Hensel up and good. And Red Hansen passing it into Keeley. And wow. knocked out of bounds by Braun Nagel. And I think Keeley got away with a shove there. As, and Nagel may have gotten away with something too. They just let that one go. So with 14.46, Mid America's lead is now three. Randy, as we've seen, excuse me, all game, Keeley and Braun Nagel just really going at it, playing tight defense on each other. Almost a, a fight. Well, not really a fight, but just a battle. A battle early in the game between those two. Braun Nagel, just a freshman from Fargo, North Dakota. Is there still some confusion here about what's going on? They changed the score back to 54 to 50. Jamestown had an extra point up there, but they got it right. And now being questioned. And they're going to come explain it to the coaches. Not sure what's going on there, but we're going to get back to some basketball action. That's the important thing. 54 50 Mid America with the lead and the basketball. The lead was 10 at one point just about a minute ago. A whistle away from the ball. Coach Lamar wants a 30 second timeout. We'll take it with him. That's his first timeout. So we'll be back in 30 seconds. 14 41 to play. Mid America 54. Jamestown Jimmy's 50 on Cam and You, your Pioneer Sports Radio Network. Okay. Live from the NAI Division Tournament, Oots right in front of us, about to inbound to Keeley off the 30-second timeout taken by Mid America. 14-41 remaining in the ball game. Mid America leading 54-50. Oots inbounding to Keeley and coming across. Now passing off to Williams in the near corner. Now Mid America wearing white tonight. The home white are going left to right on your computer screen or TV screen on campus. Oots, a nice job to save it in, but another timeout by Mid-America had to save it. And Coach Lamar wants another 30, so we'll take it with them. 30-second timeout, we'll be back. 40, 54, 50, Mid-America with the lead and the basketball, 14, 24 remain. It's all right. They give us repeats a lot. Did you answer the phone yet? It was what? Oh, really? How much time? Mac live with the action. Mac Keeley getting the basketball here from Point Lookout, Missouri. Now Jimmy Williams. He's going to drive baseline. Thought about laying it in and a shot clock violation. The senior with a mistake there. Should have known coming out of the timeout that they didn't have much time. But instead, a shot clock violation. Now ahead, Hensel, a wide open Ramon Hill. He's going to pull up. Rise, a shot off the glass. Rimming out, Jeff Miller with a big rebound. Wow, Jeff Miller coming through as 
Bo Nagel is going to be fouled by Keeley. But Bo Nagel really coming in and, and putting a lot of pressure on Keeley on those inbounds. Got to be careful. Two fouls now on Matt Keeley, the fourth team foul for Mid-America. And the Jamestown Jimmy crowd getting up on their feet, liking that. And the long trip from Jamestown, North Dakota. They pass it in. Hensel for three. Good, he got it to fall. 54, 53. We got a barn burner. We're going to be here to the end. Three pointer, 54, 53, 13, 40 to play. Jimmy Williams going to pass it into Ouse. Drive baseline, a shot up. No good. He's fouled, and it'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Wow, Adam Oots just lowers his head in the paint and tries to draw the foul and does a nice job and goes to the line. Plus, Randy, like we said earlier, Braunagel just really, and Keeley really going at it. Braunagel just putting the pressure on Keeley. That's his third, almost his third steal on Keeley. The second steal. And Adam Oots' shot is up and good. Second foul called on Matt Keeley. And the team's fourth again. But I think Braunegel got away with one. He was trying to steal. Looked like he had a hand on Keeley. And Keeley coming out and Stimson coming in. Snyder coming in for Miller. Oots back up to the free throw line. Trying to extend the lead to three. And does. Mid-America now. 16 of 16 from the free throw line. Adam Oots. Has 17 points. <laughs> Braun Nagel. See what Stinson can do with him. Very physical freshman. Williams has it up top to Hensel. Braun Nagel gonna rise for three. No good, and a foul's called. And Braun Nagel will take three shots and has a chance to tie it. Randy, I think a little acting 101 helped out on that one. Braun Nagel not really getting that much action. He's played in all 31 games. He averages just a few minutes a game and averaging 1.1 point. But he's 6 of 10 from the free throw line, 60% on the year, and his first shot rolls in. He'll get two more. Carl Nagel, only 11 of 23 in the regular season, 48% shooter, and 6 of 12 from three for 50%. Makes his second, and 56, 55. So back up. It's Braun Nagel. Missed that one. So did he miss two or three, it looks like. So just a one point. Just converted one out of three there. That's big for the Pioneers. This really could have been a dagger for them. Snyder working on Hensel. Going to get it out to Gideon. Getting a threat from Freeland. He's going to put it on the floor. Pass off to Miller. A long jumper. Good! Jeff Miller showing his range. Now back down the floor. Hill. He's going to drive the lane. Nice pass. Shot up and good from Antonio Johnson. Great look, though, from Ramon Hill. And a blocking foul caught on Braun Nagel trying to draw the charge. And he's a tricky guy getting in there trying to make something happen. That's Braun Nagel's first, so not a bad foul. As Big Dave Schaefer getting set to check in here. And he'll give Clint Snyder a break. Snyder just about a minute in the game here in the second half. And he looks to be fine, Carter. Not sure why. Right, must have done, done a lot of healing from Wednesday to Friday. Schaefer. Now Stimson, Hardy rising for three, way off the mark. And with 12-10 left in America, hanging on to the two-point lead, 58-56. And Jamestown on a 15-7 run right now. Hensel, a long three. Good, Bo Hensel, putting J-Town up.